everyone, Erin here at Minglewood Farm and Nature Preserve. Thank you so much for joining us on our virtual field trip about living things and non-living things. Today we'll be asking the questions, what is a living thing? What is a non-living thing? And how are living things and non-living things connected? Let's get started. Let's take a look around and see what we notice. How can you tell just by looking if something is living or non-living? What about by listening? What do we hear? Let's take a look around us in the forest. How can we tell if something is living or non-living just by looking at it? Well, let's start with us. We're humans and what do humans need in order to live? Do we eat food? Mm-hmm, we sure eat food, and we need food to give us energy. Living things also need energy. Do we reproduce? Yes, humans reproduce. Humans reproduce and make babies, dogs reproduce and make puppies, and plants reproduce and make seedlings. Do we use our senses? Let's use our senses for a moment. I hear wind in the trees. I hear some birds. That's right, living things use their senses. What about non-living things? Non-living things, they don't move by themselves. They don't breathe, eat, grow, or reproduce, but they do exist in nature. In fact, they're all around me right now. Let's take a look around. Do you see anything non-living? That's right, these rocks are non-living. And this water is also non-living. Water is a very important non-living thing. So is sunlight. Sunlight is an incredibly important non-living thing that living things need in order to survive. To learn more, let's check in with Miss Margie in the greenhouse. Hi everybody, I'm Miss Margie and I'm in Minglewood's greenhouse. I want you to come on inside and learn about the greenhouse and why it's so important to Farmer Bill and myself. You'll see that we have all these living plants around us. Bill and I started a lot of these seeds back in January. This greenhouse is a very important tool to Minglewood. It helps us start our seeds early and then we plant them out in the field once the weather gets warmer. Take a look around. What do you see? We have all sorts of vegetable, flower plants, and herb plants growing in here. Basil plants, tomato plants, all sorts. But it takes a lot to grow these plants. We have a lot of items that are non-living that assist us to grow these plants. It takes a lot of water. Water is a non-living. Soil is non-living. Sunlight is non-living. All that comes together to help us grow our living plants. Because of this greenhouse, and the plastic wrap it has on it, it collects the sun. And so it heats up the greenhouse and it warms my plants. It warms the soil and it helps germinate the seeds. So all during the day on a cold winter day, we'll have this greenhouse closed up and it'll be very warm. Let's think about this for a minute. Are seeds living or non-living? I have some seeds right here I want you to take a look at. Here, I have a squash seed and I have a nasturtium, which is a flower seed. Are these living or non-living? All seeds have life in them. All seeds need water, sunlight, and fertilizer to help them be healthy and to get them large enough for us to plant out on the farm. As you'll see right here, I have a, this is a squash plant. You'll see its seed shell is actually still hanging on there. And here's the nasturtium seed that has now produced a nasturtium plant. Now that it's had its sunshine, its water, and its fertilizer, we now have the living plant. Sometimes, living things like plants can turn into non-living things that we use in our everyday lives. Take the cotton plant, for example. We have a number of plants here one of which is a cotton plant. This is a red cotton plant. You'll see how the, the seed is sprouting out of cotton. It came from these cotton bowls that we grew just last summer. The cotton grows up the plant. It forms these bowls of cotton and they bust open and give us the cotton that 
uh, later on is processed into our t-shirts, our bedding, all sorts. You know what cotton is used for, all sorts of fabrics. But I have to dig deep to find the seeds. That is the cotton seed that comes out of all of the cotton out of the bowl that has come open. Thanks so much for joining me in the greenhouse. Let's go take a walk in the forest together now. Hi, thanks for joining me here in the forest. Let's explore together and discover some of the living and non-living things around us. Let's take a look around and see what we can find living and non-living. Right here I have a rock that is non-living. It is laying on some leaves that are now dead that will break down and help feed our plants that are living. You can look over here. I have a beautiful wild geranium flower that is sprouted here in the forest, but you'll notice behind it, it has a dead log. It is sprouting out of part of that dead log. The dead log is helping provide food and fertilizer for that beautiful wild geranium flower. As we have seen, non-living things like dead logs on the ground break down and help nutrients and water stay in the soil to help plants grow. A standing tree that was once alive but is now dead is very important for living things in the forest like fungi or mushrooms and animals. Living things can turn into non-living things in the forest and play a very important role. I'm standing beside an old poplar tree now rotting or decomposing. In the process of decomposing, it's creating a habitat for many insects. Many insects are eating. Oh, actually, there's a big ant going up right now. I'm watching him go up this tree. Soon, a bird will come and eat that ant. It is creating a home for my ant right now. It's creating homes for many worms and other bugs, termites and such inside this tree. But at the same time, my living birds and other insects are coming to eat these insects that are being housed inside this dead tree. These dead trees play a very important role in Minglewood's forest. Let's leave the forest now and take the last leg of our virtual field trip and check out Farmer Bill's field of vegetables out here on the farm. Come on with me. Come on, Ray, let's go. Hi, I'm out here in our strawberry patch. Farmer Bill's got a lot of great strawberries out here. He planted last fall, so they're really kicking in now that it's springtime. But I wanted to share with you how these living plants need non-living items to help them grow. Not only the air and the sun and the water, which are all non-living, but we have mulched them with pine needles. These pine needles are now dead. They were dried and harvested last fall. We bought them in big bales, and they work perfect for mulching our strawberries. They came from a living pine tree. They dropped, they dried out, they collected them and baled them, and Farmer Bill purchased the bale and mulched our strawberry plants with them. Compost is very important to us here on the farm. Compost is made up of living things into non-living things. We take our kitchen scraps, like our ends of our carrots, our lettuce leaves that we're not eating anymore, ends of our carrots, eggshells, and toss them into this compost pile we turn it in and it slowly rots. As it rots, it brings in living things like worms and centipedes that feed off of these non-living items like the eggshells. It breaks down and gives us what we call black gold for our farm fields. You too can start a compost at your home. Just collect your kitchen scraps, no meat, just vegetables and fruits, and drop them in your compost pile Turn them with your shovel, your, your worms will come, it'll decompose, it'll turn to black gold, and you can use it in your garden. Thank you so much for joining us on our virtual field trip today about living and non-living things. We hope that you're able to get outside, listen, and see for yourself some of the things that we learned today. Now, let's check for understanding. <music>